Welcome to working with Adobe Dimensions in the creation of artwork for a magazine or any graphic output you want it to be used in. So to do that, what I've got here is I've got a background image. So if I just open this up, just have a quick look. And it's already been created in Photoshop. So I'll just drag that down just to fit the screen a little bit better. Now you need to decide on what proportion you want for whatever your output is going to be. But um, here's the background that we're going to use in this case, or as an example of one. It can be anything you want. I've just saved it as a JPEG. Could be a ping file, but keep it nice and simple. What we're going to do is we're going to do something like this. So I'm going to open up my uh, dimensions file, which is Adobe Dimensions. So let's just go and open it up. I had it sort of pre-opened here. If I just click back onto dimensions it is, and there it is. So this file is not been rendered yet, so it's a little bit rough, but it's actually creating the space vehicle type concept on the top. Now, by the way, with dimensions, you can have, if I come into my settings here, we can have it as a light or dark, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it back to just to a dark setting. And there you go. And that sort of fits in the range of really Substance Painter and all the other cool 3D outputs that you can actually, or software apps you can use with Adobe. So I'm just going to go OK. So here we are with the file. Now what you'll also notice here when I've just brought this in is that we can actually just click down here and we can drag out our file to be bigger or once we're on this background so this is where you can actually just drag it to, to fit etc i'm just going to undo that one what i want to do is i can actually um, with this background if i just click back away from that and just on the outside here we should just get this actions here we can actually also once it's on the background come down here and just change the size so i've just got this as 2000 pixels by 1,333, whatever it is you want to create proportions for, and I'm just staying with 72 DPI at this stage. So it can be output for uh, print or screen-based media. Now, if I come up here, you'll see in the scene, I've got a few different views and things like that we can actually start creating to get the right look and feel. But what we're going to do is we're going to match all our artwork onto the background. So just to do that, um, if I click on the car here, and just open up again. These are all of the different parts of the car from the wheel through to every element that's in there. So let me go through just to say uh, wheel two at the stage and I'll click on that. And there it is, the wheel on the other side. I'll go on to say uh, wheel one and here it is on this side. And then if I just open that, we'll see each part of this is just a little grouped area. In fact, what's what we do, we group it and we put it together and then we put it into a folder, which is in a big folder, which is the whole car in this setup. So when we're working with lots of things, we can actually have big sets of groups within groups within groups. Um, and actually then they can be moved around um, individually. So if I click on that and it's just the car, um, then the whole thing becomes a graphic that sort of can be moved around like so. So that's why we want to sort of work with groups as well. And it's all keyed here to the background. So let's go and right from the beginning, we're going to set that up. Or by the way, once we just do want to do a test render, I can actually just test render it from here. And that will just actually do just a bit of a render there. And that is just starting to render off at the moment. So um, I can have it rendering full. But here it goes through at this stage. Now we actually want to click it just to turn it off. So it's highlighted at this stage when we're not um, wanting to render just so we don't slow things down. But what you're going to see is it's going to get a much higher quality output just like the preview pretty much is what we're going to view when we actually render it. Now when we do render it, we're going to render it from the render tab at the top here. So let's go through and start this whole process off. So if I just deselect outside that now, you can see that it's starting to render and it's certainly much better quality. It certainly starts sucking up a bit of power on the computer as well. So let's go and build a, a, from the scratch 
a individual file and put it together like this. Or oh, by the way, I'm just going to turn the rendering off just before we do that. So it's lost a bit of quality there, hasn't finished. But we can see in this favorites, we can look at it top down, quarter view, or whatever it is you want to view. Okay, obviously it doesn't fit the background, but it's really great when we're setting things up to begin with. So let's get into starting a project from square one. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to go File, New. And for the one that's currently there, yeah, I'll save that for now. Actually, no, I won't because I've got that more rendered in the other view, but um, make sure you do save it when you're creating your work, etc. Now, here's a default size that's come up here, and straight away, here's the property size, which give you the uh, output resolution, etc. I'm going to stay with pixels because I like it for both screen and print, and as long as it's a high enough resolution. But if you remember the background that I had here, so what I can do is, is this basically two thousand so two thousand and basically the height was one three 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 so if you want to create your background first that's certainly a good way to do it i'll just go return and now here's my background view here now it's a little bit big so what you can actually do right from the outset is here is you'll see this up here and um Basically, it's got this little framing shape. So one is a camera. It's got a little star on it. This is where we're going to create some of our own specific views. And you can do as many of these as you, as you want. And this one here is just to frame it. So it's sort of just framed it back in to fit the page here. Right. Now, we can bring in all sorts of 3D images. There's a whole lot here that you can use. And if you've got available all the stocks you want from Adobe Stocks, you can bring in pretty much anything you want. So to do some very high-end stuff, you can bring in any sort of models or even that other people have designed models for you. But in this case, we're going to start and create with just primitives and our own. So the primitives, and here they are just here, is just type, which we can work with really well, planes and cones, but we can do a few interesting things with them. So we're just going to stay to make up our little space vehicle here, just with um, simple shapes. So the first thing what I'm going to do is create a wheel. Okay, so I can make a wheel out of all sorts of things and down here, we've also got some textures we can put on there. Now, a whole range of stock textures and things like that you can use as well as well as lighting scenarios. Um, down here, we've also got a lot of backgrounds that we can use, as well as graphics. But you know, for the case of putting this together, we're going to work with our own. So let's go through and just create a wheel. And something you can just play a lot with an experiment. We're going to create one wheel. And of course, we're going to group it. And then we can duplicate it. We only need to do it once. So I'm going to start off with just this uh, cylinder shape here. So if I just sort of click on that, here's a cylinder. And what I can do is I can sort of scale it by just clicking on this area here, can rotate it around like so, and it's actually just sitting on the ground plane at the moment. Command Z, Control Z on a PC just to undo it. And so you can flip it around. Uh, if you use any other 3D programs, very, very common. Um, but this is sort of a lot easier to use, very, very fast to get yourself going with. But what I want to do with this particular one is I want to change the size to reflect better graphics. So if I come back down to the cylinder here, what I can see is I can scroll down a little bit just to reveal this. I've got radius, I've got height, all sorts of things I want. So down here, I can actually maybe just start increasing the radius or decreasing it. So I might just take it about to 8, something like that. The height, well, that's a little bit high, so I'm going to bring it down smaller, just so that uh, I want a decent sort of a wheel there, but still, maybe I'll take it about 44. That's great. And I sort of want to give it a bit of a bevel as well on this one. So what we can do is we can open up these bevels, etc. And I can just click that on here. And then I can actually slide this just to mm, just to give it just a bit of a touch here. And oh, that's looking quite good as a wheel. Um, there's also a slice thing that you can actually play with here as well. And it's just sort of the slicing is just putting the edges on it. So if I take all the way down to like uh, so, you'll see that it's uh, 
just sliced with instead of being a nice curved graphic it's it's really quite hard etc so I sort of want mine to be well I quite like it like that actually but I might just give it just a little bit of a finesse and 10 maybe even a little bit more just to make it nice and smooth so anyway here's my sort of wheel graphic here at the moment and um, there's even a thing down here on slices if I just take this down here um, we can actually slice it now if, this is great if we was well, probably we're making more of a wheel hub I suppose in this case so that could be worth interest worth doing and playing with um, we can even use the same element in different ways but anyway um, I don't want to do a, a hub effect at this stage I just want the wheel so I've got my graphic here and that's the first one what I might want to do is I'm just going to uh, rotate this just around like so and I just want to hold my shift key there to constrain it and there it is and I'm just going to drag it up just so I've got my wheel up like so so that's great so what else can I do with this one well I'm going to come all the way through down to the bottom here just to make this nice and easy and I'm going to look for some of the textures here but I'm going to get the stripe effect and just drag that on like so so um, with the stripe effect rather as well um, we can actually change all of these things at the same time just to give it more of that wheel like sort of feel so play with these play with your boss things whatever it's um, just getting something going here but it's something to really experiment with all of these settings so the first thing what I'm going to do is I better come down here and I just want to save that into the same folder and um, I'll just better locate that folder that I'm in etc so back to the Macintosh there uh, downloads and space car that's the one I want and I'm going to call it uh, my car that's pretty original but still that's where I want to save it to it and I've got my first part of the graphic for the wheel hey but that's not all I want to make this wheel a little bit more interesting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this little torus effect here and uh, that should have just come up on the page here so by the way you can if I click through these you can actually use different move tools we can actually pan the whole um, scene so if I click on this one for example then and just on this one at the moment and click on that there it is we're sort of just panning around like so okay but I just want to just be on my just selection tools to begin with so I'm just going to come back up just to here okay so if I click on that of course I can just move it around here so let's go and just get this other tool in here okay so this torus effect right what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I, I could actually keep it at the top and start building out like that but I want to just make this wheel a little bit more interesting so I'm going to hold my shift key just to constrain it and I sort of quite like the size of that at the moment and I'm just going to bring it around and um, what I want to do is not make, well, I could actually do a series of these on the outside, but, you know, have fun experimenting with it. But what I'm going to do with my particular one is I'm just going to bring it just a little bit smaller. So um, right down in, in here, we can just click and move it anywhere we want. Um, we can move it around like so from just scaling it like this. Uh, we can, of course, move it as we did before. Um, and we could just scale it from this one here or we can come in and change these things individually but I thought I'll just do this one first and I'm just going to take that down to oh actually that's sort of kind of not too bad there I'm just going to bring it out and uh, if, if it doesn't fit exactly as you want well, a good way to do that is just to go through and view it until you can see it a bit better so again I'm just going to click on this one here and just going to scale that around and what I want to do is just move it around just to get everything sort of placed as I want there just bring it down a little bit it's looking great and we can also um, set any views we want as we're putting them together I'm going to show that in just a minute just get this working just a little bit better for now and um, I'm going to just come and give this a texture just to slowly put this together and there you go there's my texture on there now 
So one more little thing I might just put in there to get this wheel put together is I want just this little circle effect in here. So there's my circle, obviously the wrong size. So again, I can just bring that through and out to the front there. I just want to, um, so I might just uh, bring it around the side like so. Or if, if it doesn't work, because I want to turn it around the side a little bit, maybe just go back to the right tools. And then, so I can also just click on, get the access to the right things. Okay, so that's looking pretty good now. Now, do take time um, to get it really lined up. I'm doing this a little bit quick, but I just want to go and get a nice little texture just for that to finish off with. So here's my first wheel, and let's do a, a quick render. So I'm going to click on the render there, and there it goes. I'm just clicking on it, and I've got it set to render full, but now you can start seeing the quality of that. Okay. So it's looking pretty good actually. I'm just going to go and turn that off to stop rendering. Um, what I want to do is I just want to grab a selection around everything. So here's everything here. And basically all I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to um, not duplicate it here, but I'm going to group it. Now you can go Command G, it gives you the Command G, but I want to just go Group. And I'm going to call this Wheel. Uh, left, I think I'll call it, um, this will be the top one, left and just front. So nice and simple and return key and basically if I close that up there, it's actually grouped, which means now if I come back on and click on the file here, so it's just there, I should just be able to just click on it once more and there we go, we just moved the whole thing together. So here's my first wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that. So just in here, I can now go and just go duplicate. And here it is. But this wheel, I'm going to call it wheel left right. R H T. And I've got a second wheel. And what I can do is just a drag that out like so, there's my second wheel. Of course it's the wrong way around, so what I'm going to do is just turn it all the way around there, hold my shift key, just snap it in there, and there we are. We've got our scene just to begin with, just the first wheel, so I want to do front and back. Well your vehicle might only have two wheels, but anyway. So there's my first two wheels, um, all good to go. Now I'm not doing an animation, I'm just working on some stills here. So the next video I'm going to just duplicate those as we did before and just get ready for putting the base on. So, and I've just relabeled them just to make sure each one is each. For example, if I click on that and uh, that highlights the right one, etc. So make sure that you know which one they are. So just label them carefully. So I could put an axle through them and I could actually do that just by simply using the cylinder tool and making it as long and skinny and putting it through but in this case I'm not going to do that I'm just going to keep it nice and simple as well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get another shape here so let's see what I'm going to do I might just use the cylinder in a slightly different way so what I'm going to do is just click on that once more and I'm going to just uh, Mm, let's see, I think I quite like that size, but I, what I do want to do is just get a bit of a bevel on it. Mm, so there's the bevel. And um, what I'm going to do is just bring this down just a little bit. So, see, I'll just scale this just a bit here. And I'm going to come up in just the height and just play with that, taking it down like so. I'm just going to bring that through here and of course, just center it. I'm just using my guides here. Take that just a little bit higher, and I'm just going to run that through. Okay, so I've just got them nicely centered there at the moment. So, of course, this is really aesthetics. It's not the reality of the wheel fits everywhere you want. We're just looking at this stage of getting something that looks quite cool. So I just want that to fit in at about that space there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Uh, duplicate that. So I'm going to hold my Option key. See what happens when you hold the Option key? It just duplicated. So I'll just do that once again. So I hold the Option key and you see that double arrow duplicates. I'm just going to drag that up 
like so now actually a little bit lower and what I'm going to do with just the radius there I'm just going to actually with a bevel actually just play that a little bit more and see I'm just going to bring that up just a bit more of a, a, a sort of a, a sphere type feel to the uh, the look of it etc and uh, with that one I'm just going to come along and just give it some color or texture if you will and um, I'm going to give it uh, just a, a watery feel for that texture very very clean and clear with this bottom one here I'm going to come back and give it something more metallic or very brass like in the sense so there we go so I also want to actually with that same plane there as I just want to play up that same shape and I'm just going to duplicate that once more just drag that up to duplicate it and there it is and just uh, flatten it all the way down in fact I, what I want to do is actually put the radius larger at this stage and I'm just going to uh, with the height of this drag it even further down just to give it a nice sort of effect and um, then I've sort of got my sort of spaceship type feel to it so I might just drag that up just a little bit here now I am going into the wheels here but what we don't see it doesn't matter um, we're really just working on the settings and like the uh, torus we used before this is where we could actually give it a wheel hub so I'm not going to actually do it at this stage really just want to make it nice and simple and let's say that's my graphic for now so I can keep building it build wing mirrors do all sorts of things just working with very simple shapes so I'm just going to go and save this now and what I want to do is when it saves I just want to group the whole lot of it so I'm just going to drag a bit of a marquee over everything here and come down to my group set up here and there it is group 5 I'm just going to call this car just so I've got something that's sort of going to work so this car if I, actually if I close it now the car should contain everything okay so if I open that up actually I haven't got everything in there didn't select everything so what are we going to do well what I can just put it there to control it is oh, I think I've got it all in there now yes it is all in so if it hasn't come in that's fine but uh, what I'm going to do is just drag that into that drag that into that drag that into that and now everything is part of the car so what I'm going to do is put a bit of a background in here now I can scale the whole thing for example if I come here and I'm scaling the whole file now because it's all part of the same graphic and I'm just going to go and save this now now as you checking and working on it you might get a different view so what I'm going to do is I like this view I've got here so I'm going to come over to my camera icon here and I'm going to click on bookmark and I'm going to go plus and I'm just going to call this one view three I think three quarter would be a great one for this one and just return but maybe I want a top view as well or certainly another view so if I just come back onto my rotate areas here maybe I want to just turn that around and get an idea what it looks like right on the top there okay but uh, otherwise I can go to pan I can zoom all these try them all out but uh, then now I can just put that into where I want just going to rotate it a little bit more around here and that looks great but take your time getting it right I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to go to top view so add that in and I'll just put view top hit return now whenever I want to go between those views I'm just going to come back to my pointer tool and I can actually well I can just frame it to best fit the frame again this is what the framing is I can come back here and I'll go to top view and it takes to that view or the three quarter view so we can put all these views in here and we just get it sorted as we want 
So I'm going to save it once more. We're almost there now. All I want to do is bring in a background. So we're going to put a background in and we're going to just uh, set it up so that we're going to have it perfectly fitting. Great. So let's go and put our background in there. We'll get the perspective correct and even the lighting. And we're going to render. And that's basically about it. So really fast to learn, really fast to put together, and you can get some great results. Okay, so let's do this. So on the file here, all I need to do is basically bring in the background. So a great way to do this is I can actually come through and up to the environment up the top here. If I click on this one, it's going to open up um, this background area here. So we want to match this background, but there's nothing to match yet. So I'm going to click on this color here. don't want the color. I want to go to an image and I can just drag and drop my image. Just a ping or a JPEG is great, but um, just to make it easier for the video, I'm just going to click on the folder, another way of doing it as well. And here's my background space image we started with, and I'm going to click on that. Remember, this was sized to begin with, so the whole file is the correct format already. Start off like you intend to finish, and there you go. Look at that, it's coming great. And I know what you're saying, it looks like it's crashing, it's certainly not matching the background, and the colors don't even match. So let's see, how can we sort this out? So what I'm going to do is, with this, with this environment, now we can actually see match background. So watch what happens. I'm going to click on match background, and let's see, aspect ratio, multiple lights, yes, we want all those, and we want the perspective. Sure we do. Let's try that out. So if I click that, here it is. The scale, the size of my background is being configured, and so look at the colors, and look at the reflections in there. Now, you can't ask for much better than that, apart from getting a fantastic output at the end. Now, we could go through and just click on the render here, but I'm good to go. So what I'm going to do is come over to the render engine at this stage. Now wherever I've saved this to, it actually should go there. Um, and what we can do, we can click on render or we select where we're going to save to. And mine is actually going to the cloud at this stage. So what I can do is I can just click on this one. And I don't want to go to the cloud for this particular one. But I could save it there. I'm going to go back to where my other files were. So we can save things to the cloud if you've got a cloud license um, and the way you're using this. This time I'm saving to a specific place. So space car and I'm going to go to open and I'm now just going to go rendering it. I've already set the size but this is where you can decide to have PSD file or a ping file. Now if you want to have a, a layer type file with effects, that's great. So I'm going to stay with that. But if you just want to get it flat, then a ping's perfect as well. But anyway, let's go and render just so we can see what's happening here. And the file is now heading on to a render. And it's slowly going through this process. So it is a reasonable size. So it will just take a little bit of time to render. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this render and then we're just going to see what the state is. And so I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. And here it is, the final rendered file in all its beauty and color. So this is just saved, in this case, as a Photoshop layered file. And let's just go and have a look at that. And there's the final file. And you see how this is put together. It's in its folder here. And basically, there's different maps that we can use and access, etc. So I'll turn those off, and um, then you've got a slightly few different ways of the whole thing going together there. So, voila, the final file ready for you to use in any format you want, and enjoy. So thank you for watching.